Hey folks, so today we're going to be looking at how to create a weekly plan guide with Google Docs, um, Google Slides, and Google Classroom. We're going to be covering both Slides and Docs because both have um, applicability here. You could use either one, and frankly you could use any other document creation software out there. The key part here is that we're looking to improve parent communication with at home because as we know, Google Classroom is a walled garden, meaning that if they don't have access to an account for our district, then they can't get in. They can get the parent or guardian email summaries, but sometimes it's not as helpful for parents as they need it to be. And it can be quite overwhelming if you're getting every class in one email. So last week, Stephen Avery, the instructional coach, one of the instructional coaches at the middle school sent out a learning template and over the course of the past week, we've been working directly with a teacher at the middle school who has been uh, working on it, crafting it to be her own, and it's really taken off with her teacher, with her parents and her students. They've enjoyed it a lot and thought that it was very helpful. So we're going to look at how you can create it yourself. I will put the links for the templates out in the comments for this video on YouTube, so that way you guys can get the templates on your own, um, and then. Uh, you can build it, customize it on your own. So I'm going to present my screen to you now and walk you through what to do. Okay, so first off, we're going to take a look at the template as is um, from Mr. Avery from last week. So he shared out this template for remote learning and when we look at this document, there's a couple key pieces to keep in mind. And again, you can customize this to meet your own needs. So he's putting out a plan for the entire week for his class. Now we'll look at another template in a moment that sort of gives you more of a plan structure so that way multiple teachers can be um, giving the same plan. But you could complete that within a Google Doc as well and just duplicate this page multiple times. So. First off, looking at the top of the document, we're going to talk about what is our goal for the week, what are we focusing on. So whether you're an ELA teacher uh, and you're focusing on, in this case, purpose and uh, signal language, or whether you're a science teacher and you're focusing on DNA, whatever you'd like to focus on, this provides sort of the overarching story for the week and makes it easy for parents to understand what their students are actually learning about. He also customized this template to have this image at the top, so that way his contact information is included. The other teacher that we've been working with has been using Google Calendar appointment slots, and so for her, she actually customized this document so that there's a link at the top for students to be able to make individual appointments with her anytime using Google Appointment Calendar. And if you're interested in that, there's more information online on how to set up appointment calendars, or you can also reach out to me. And then finally, the other key piece is reminding them that they really should be taking a break. We aren't looking for these kids to be online every day, um, all day, so they do need to be reminded to take that break. Now let's look at what the actual guts of the template are. So from here, we have the five days of the week, and then we have this broken into what is the focus for the day, and this is a lightweight focus. So we're talking about what is the key fact or the key piece of our lesson today. So it could be a video lesson, like this is a YouTube video. It could be directions. Um, it could be live meetings with your teacher. So in this case, he's setting it up so that students meet with him on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and on the other days, they're getting instruction through another modality. And then this is the key part that I really like, and I think parents do as well. This provides a checklist of what the students need to be completing each day for these. Now, Here's a real powerful piece of this. So when we're looking at this complete worksheet on Google Classroom, now by default or, or the nature of this is to link to the Google Doc that the students are going to be answering. However, what works even better is if you actually go onto Google Classroom and here's where the power comes in. So um, I'm not going to be able to find this exact worksheet that the students are going to be completing, but I'm going to bring you to another one for another class that I, that I have teacher access to. So once my Google Classroom loads, I can choose, um, for example, I can choose this class and 
Then once it loads, I can look at classwork. And you can do this from classwork or stream. Either one will give you what I'm looking for. But once we come into here and I find an assignment that the students need to do. So here's an assignment. If you click on the three dots and you can say copy link. So then you can come back into the template and you can change the link from being to the Google Doc to being to the classroom instead. And so then when I click apply, if I were to preview that, it's actually going to take me to classroom. So as a student, I'm a teacher in this class, it's get, it shows a little bit weird. But then when I see this as a task that I need to do, I can click on it. It will actually take me right to the assignment page for um, this assignment in Google Classroom. So you would need to build out your assignment on Google Classroom just like you normally would. Give each student a template, uh, a copy of their own template to work on. And so here's the work that I would need to do. And I could just go through, do it here, press submit and be done. I wouldn't actually ever have to get into the other side of Google Classroom that could be overwhelming to kids. Now the one downside here is that this link takes you to Google Classroom. And as I just said, the, um, the Google Classroom is a closed wall environment. So parents wouldn't actually be able to see this. But you could, if you wanted to, a couple different modifiers that you could do here. You could link to, you could use this to link to the template if you wanted to. So that way parents could see what it was. But then you could also, another teacher that we worked with this morning has multiple classes of students. So you could put, um, for example, block one in here or period one, period three, etc. So that way, instead of linking to Google Classroom here, you could link period one to that assignment in your period one Google Classroom and link this one to your period three in Google Classroom. So that way, if they're in period three, they just click on that link and it will take them right there. So that's a slight modifier that they could do that makes this a lot easier for the students to handle. And then other pieces outside of that Google Classroom link, which I think is super powerful and from the student side, it makes it really easy, uh, is to include links to things like Quizlets and other um, formative practice within the student to-dos. So list out your, your week here. And then finally, on Friday, the focus is to do basically the catch up, make sure that everything is finished. We're not going to give you any new work, but if you need to do an extension, then there are some optional extensions in there. So we're sort of looking at them working hard Monday through Friday and then catching up on Friday, on uh, Monday through Thursday and then catching up on Friday. Now, another option that you could do the same sort of document. Now, as I said, you could also take this and copy it. But Stephen also has this other template that is set up for um, Google Slides instead. And the concept is the same. You would fill in what the daily focus is for each one. But the key part here is that this is meant to be a clan plan. So uh, at the middle school, we have four teachers per clan. So the kid would see four teachers um, worth of work. And the idea is that each teacher each subject has a page of this document and then um, this would be our week three plan and each teacher would fill it in. And so then as a parent, I would have one document that had everything that I would need to know for all the subjects for my students class all in one place. Um, this is again a Google slide deck, but you could easily do this within a Google Doc as well. Slides just happens to work really well for this because it constrains you or it contains all of the stuff for one subject into one week. Now, in terms of what you can do with it from here, um, if I wanted to uh, pass this out to my parents and my students, one thing that I would do is uh, to go into, in our case, we use Synergy. So I would use Synergy to send out a mailing and I would send it to both students and parents so that way both were to get it and it would go to both their email and their Synergy mail and basically walk them through, here's the plan for the week. You can find all the information that you need within it. If you have any questions, reach out to me, that sort of general idea. Um, but that way you know that the parents get it as well. And then you can also include the template as a view only on Google Classroom. So that way it could be a resource, for example, for the week. Now, one other thing that I think would be good to mention as we're talking about 
um, incorporating all of this within Google Classroom is to start thinking really mindfully about the structure for your Google Classroom. And there's a couple different ways that um, we've seen teachers setting up their Google Classrooms within the past two or three weeks as this new normal has been started. And I just wanted to sort of bring your attention to two of them um, as I get those tabs opened up. So that way you can maybe envision where these week-long plans would be uh, entered in for your students. So these two teachers happen to be high school teachers. Um, however, they are um, they give you some really good ways to sort of work through the framework. So I'm going to share my screen so that way you can see what these Google Classrooms would wind up looking like. And so looking here, looking at uh, this particular classroom as an example, so looking at classwork, this teacher asked her particular students and they said that having a daily list would be really useful. So she has a daily topic um, set up and then a checklist of one, two, three, four of what they need to be doing during today. And her students have found that this is really useful. Now, something that I'll point out is that from a, um, like a visual side, these are all resources and then this is an assignment. And if I were a student in her class and had done this assignment, then it would actually turn this icon gray um, and then when I haven't done it, it would stay that solid blue color. So that's just a visual that you don't really pick up on unless you're a student in the class. And then this other teacher has changed her plan to be posting by weeks instead. And so she keeps all of her paperwork at the very top, but then she builds in a subject for each week. And so as a student in her class, now this might seem overwhelming to you, but she's combined three classes into one. And so she has customized which group of students is going to see which assignment. So that way, if I were to come in here and be a co-op B student, then I would only see my co-op B assignments um, underneath week three and um, et cetera, et cetera. So each of the weeks is lined out as a topic on the left. Um, the other teacher chose to do it by day, but using the clan plan or the, the remote learning template that we've covered, Either one of those you could include as a resource for the given week or the day. Um, so that way it would be easy for them to locate. So that sort of walks you through um, how to do the clan plans um, or the remote learning templates. Again, I'm going to share out some templates on how to do both of those in the comments on YouTube. So feel free to grab them and use them and make them your own. Thank you to Stephen Avery who made them. Um, and then if you have any questions or want to learn more about how to make them or use them, then feel free to reach out.